Today I'm going to be taking a look at a Linux distribution I've never looked at before. 4M Linux. Don't know much about 4M Linux other than it's supposed to be a really minimal Linux distribution. Think of it in the same vein as something like Puppy Linux or maybe Tiny Core. Uh, 4M Linux is really designed to be a run as a live USB stick, but you can install it. And today I'm actually going to run through the installation. I'm going to do an installation and first look inside a virtual machine. I'm going to install this in VirtualBox today. 4M Linux uses JWM, Joe's Window Manager, which, are, which is a really nice, lightweight, minimal floating window manager. I really like JWM. JWM is also the default window manager in Puppy Linux. So again, think of 4M Linux kind of in the same kind of light as Puppy Linux. So I had a viewer, one of our regular viewers, email me the other day and asked me to take a look at 4M Linux. I haven't done very many distro reviews in the last couple of months because, quite frankly, I've looked at almost every Linux distribution known to man. I've probably done a couple of hundred like distro reviews over the last year and a half, and I'm kind of tired of that. I don't find them... Uh, fun anymore. <laughs> I don't I don't enjoy looking at all these various Linux distributions because quite frankly to me they're all the same, right? Because of my typical workflow, as long as they all have the Linux kernel and they all have a shell that I can get to. That's all I need. I really don't care about what's on top of all of that as far as desktop environments and window managers and pre-installed applications and all that. To me, the only real difference between distribution A and distribution B is uh, the package manager that they use and whether they're on a static release model or a rolling release model. Other than that, I, I could live on any Linux distribution out there. So I've kind of got burnt out <laughs> doing these uh, distro reviews. But today, because this reviewer asked me about 4M Linux, and, and quite frankly, I'm kind of intrigued about 4M Linux because it's my kind of distro. Again, very lightweight, designed to be really a live USB, uses Joe's window manager. Should be fun. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at distrowatch.com, um, their page about 4M Linux. 4M Linux is an independent distro, so it's not based on another distribution, so it's independent. Country of origin is Poland. It is a 32-bit distro, which is to be expected with this kind of distro, these extremely small, minimal distros like Puppy, Tiny Core, 4M, almost always are 32-bit because the machines that typically would run these are going to be ancient machines that often are 32-bit. 4M Linux, reading the blurb here from DistroWatch, is a mini miniature 32-bit Linux distro focusing on four capabilities. Maintenance, multimedia, mini server, and mystery. So 4Ms. Uh, maintenance, it's a live CD or USB stick, so it makes sense. It's a system rescue USB stick, so that's why one of the M stands for maintenance. One of the M stands for multimedia. Strangely enough, because you wouldn't think of this kind of distro for doing anything with multimedia, but it says for playing DVDs, I guess, and other multimedia files. So it has some basic multimedia stuff. This isn't, you know, Ubuntu Studio <laughs> or something like that. Uh, mini Server says it uses the iNet D daemon. Okay. And Mystery, that's a strange one for the fourth M. It says provides several small Linux games. So I guess the fact that it plays games... Uh, Counts as a mystery. Uh, that's strange, but I guess it works out to give it 4M. So 4M Linux, there you go for what the name actually stands for. As far as popularity here on DistroWatch, it's actually a rather popular Linux distribution considering I don't know anything about it. it currently in the six-month DistroWatch rankings, it's ranked 44 in their top 100. So that is actually a really good ranking. Their homepage here, 4MLinux.com, I went to their homepage to see if I could get any information about 4M Linux. And this website, I'm going to tell you right now, sucks. There is nothing on it. There's a news about the latest beta release that released just yesterday. I'm not reviewing that. I'm re reviewing the latest real release, which was uh, a week or two ago, version 28.0. If I go to the About page, there's really nothing here. If I go to the Help page, there's really not much here. Uh, gives me some information about how to install it. The install is dead simple, though I, I don't think I'm going to need any help. And then you have a download link. The download link, uh, 
there really isn't a download link either. It just says make a donation with PayPal. After payment, you will be re redirected to the download page. So I guess you click donate, go to PayPal, give them a buck or two, and then you get to a download page. But you don't have to go through all that. The ISO is hosted over on SourceForge. Also, if you go to the release announcement over at distrowatch.com, the latest release announcement here, it should give you a link. Yeah, right here to the latest ISO. Again, hosted over at uh, SourceForge. So today, instead of using it as a live image, a live USB stick, or even running it as a live ISO here in VirtualBox, I'm actually going to run through the installation because you actually can install 4M Linux. And the viewer that asked me to take a look at this actually did install it on, on physical hardware. So because he went through the installation, I, I too will go through the installation because he, he asked me a question that I'm going to try to answer later uh, once I get to where that's relevant. But anyway, uh, we're going to, I guess, launch straight into a live environment. The live environment, of course, is going to be Joe's Window Manager, JWM. This may take a minute or two to load up. It looks like it says it's installing uh, several things. So I'm going to pause the video. I'll be back once the live environment finally loads up. All right, it says it's starting X in one second. <laughs> so there we go and by default the screen resolution is very small but i will fix that later for now though what i want to do is i want to run through the installation first i'm going to answer these basic questions immediately a terminal pops up and asks me uh do i have an english keyboard and yes um choose your keyboard layout i want number two english uh, do we want to go ahead and set a root password? It doesn't matter because I'm going to run through the installation But if I was running this as a live image, you may want to go ahead and set a, a root password for this session But uh, yeah, you know what? I'll go ahead I'll ch choose yes for this and go ahead and give it a password It didn't like my super short, but yet very secure password. I gave it Do I live in Europe? I'm not sure why living in Europe. Yes or no is relevant, but I'm going to choose no All right, and that's it and then the live environment, I guess, finishes loading up. Conky loads up. You have a dock at the top here that loads up. And some very big desktop icons. Anyway, this screen resolution that's very small is going to be kind of tough to deal with. But again, I, all I wanted to do was just launch the installer. The installer, we need to choose a target partition. Press enter to continue. No partitions found on slash dev SDA. Okay. So we have to create partitions before we can run through the installer. So if I go back to the menu, bash is here. So the bash shell, which is just going to launch a terminal into the bash shell. So most Linux distributions have a couple of different tools you could use to create your partitions. Either something like fdisk, cfdisk, parted, gparted. Usually you'll have several of these uh, already on your system. I'm assuming CF disk, which is one I like to use, is on here, and it is. So I'm going to go ahead and create DOS partition. Uh, I gave this machine 8 gigs of space, this virtual machine. I'm going to make one 8 gig partition. I'm not going to do a swap or any of that. So just going to make one big 8 gig partition. It's going to be the primary partition. We need to make it bootable, of course, since it's the only partition. The type should be Linux, but it's already figured that out. I don't have to change that. Now we need to write the partition table to the disk. Uh, do you really want to do that? Type yes, the full word yes, to do that. And then quit out of CS disk. So we created one partition, one 8 gig partition. So let me go ahead and exit out of that terminal and go back to the installer. And now when I press enter to continue, on which partition should your, your new 4M Linux be installed? And it recognizes that I created slash dev slash SDA1. So that obviously is going to be the one I need to install to. So SDA1 is all I need to type here. Hit enter. SDA1 will be formatted to extend 4. Do you wish to change this? No, extend 4 is fine. And... Basically, this is a, a safety in, in case you did not want to format SDA1, but in this case, this is what we want to do. So, Is 4M Linux to be the only operating system on your PC? Yes, that's all that's going to be installed on this particular VM, so yes. A bootloader will be installed for you, so we don't have to fool with you know configuring a bootloader. So just press enter here. Uh, the summary of changes, okay. 
Everything looks good. Press Y to begin the installation. And the installation for such a minimal Linux distribution probably shouldn't take that long. On most modern Linux distributions, the installation can take, at this point, anywhere between 5 and 15 minutes, depending on you know the, the distro and how big the image is. For these really, really small distros like 4M, oftentimes these installs can be done in a minute or two and here, done. <laughs> that's how long that installation took. So that's it. That's all we had to do. So all I have to do, basically, I'm going to go ahead and just kill this VM. And I need to detach the, uh, the ISO. So I'm going to go here to the settings here in the VM and remove the ISO. This would be the same as unplugging your live USB stick after an installation on physical hardware. So I'm just going to remove that. And now when I start, this should be our freshly installed 4M Linux. All right, let me get the VM sized if I can. All right, so after restarting it, after, quote, the installation, you notice when I start it, it still says it's installing some stuff. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but this is the same thing that happened when you loaded the live environment. You know, you got basically the same things loading, uh, various init D add-ons. Uh, not sure what's going on there. It took a minute or two for the live environment to load. It took a minute or two for this to load. All right, so we finally got booted up here. It says 4M uses English by default. Do I wish to change this? No, English is good for me. There is no root password. Do you want to set it up now? Yes, I'll go ahead and make sure that we have a root password on this VM. Do I live in Europe? <laughs> no, I don't. All right, all right, press enter. And there you go, 4M Linux login. Now we never created a user. Because we never created a user, there's only one user on the system. Of course, that's gonna be root. And luckily we gave root a password, so I can type a password. And here you go. Our freshly installed 4M Linux 28.0. Now I get to the part where the guy that emailed me that asked me to take a look at 4M Linux, he installed it. And he was trying it out, I guess, in a VM. Uh, initially, he, tr he tried it out in a VM, and he could not get a proper screen resolution for 4M Linux. Now, for these really minimal Linux distributions like 4M and Tiny Core, you're not going to get VirtualBox Guest Editions installed. Uh, chances are they don't have VirtualBox Guest Editions in whatever repositories they have. It's not that kind of distro, right? You're not gonna find a lot of, you know, the stuff you're used to. If you're used to repos like the Debian repos or the Arch repos, uh, these really minimal distributions, again, don't even bother trying to do VirtualBox guest editions. So how you do this, and let me change that, okay. How you do this is, what you need to do is you need to open the terminal again, so I'm gonna, Go in the terminal, and if it already has this program on the system, type this, X, R, and R, and hit enter. Now, when you hit enter, hopefully it's installed, <laughs> and on 4M it is, you get all this, these listings of screen resolutions that are available for this machine. Now, my monitor is 1920 by 1080. 1920 by 1080 is not a screen resolution that is available to me but for purposes of recording this VM I am going to choose you know what I'm going to choose 1680 by 1050 so how I do that type XR and R uh, the VM is acting slow here XR and R space dash S space and then what was the resolution I said I was going to choose 1680 by 1050 so 1680 mm. Keyboard is acting up in the VM a little bit. It's just a little bit of input lag. Uh, probably not really the, the VM's fault. It's probably because I've got a lot of stuff going on with various USB devices plugged in uh, on my, my host machine. Anyway, hit enter, and there you go. We are now at 1680 by 1050 resolution. All right, the cocky. When I did the resize and changed the screen resolution, the cocky was in the center of the screen because it actually didn't move over when I 
change the screen resolution. So in the terminal, I opened up a terminal and I typed kill all conky to kill conky. And then I'm going to retype conky. And now it should, yeah, it relaunches conky over on the right hand side of the screen rather than it taking up the middle of the screen, which was kind of annoying. <laughs> All right, the first thing I'm going to do is Joe's Window Manager. Joe's Window Manager by default has a panel. So Joe's Window Manager is very similar to Fluxbox and Openbox in that you have a right-click menu, or in Joe's Window Manager, in that, this case, you have a left-click menu. You left-click on the desktop, and you have your menu system. But in the panel, you do have an icon here that you can click on, and you get that same menu system. So Joe's Window Manager... Again, it, it makes a really nice window manager to put on a distro like this because it's very light, very fast, and it already has a panel built into it where Openbox does not. So you already have a menu system and a SysTray and everything ready to go. So when you open up the menu system, you'll see you have some shell stuff here at the top, bash and tclsh. Then you have an internet category. We have NetSurf. NetSurf, of course, is our small and fast web browser. This is NetSurf 3.8. I don't know much about NetSurf. Uh, it's not the kind of web browser most people are going to play with. It's not particularly useful. <laughs> the only uh, claim to fame for NetSurf is it's light and fast and good for a distro like this. 4M Linux is not going to put something bloated like Firefox or Chrome on the ISO, so that's why NetSurf is here. We also have HexChat for an IRC chat client. So I guess we could connect to a support channel if we needed. It says, uh, warning, running IRC as root. We, we still only have the root user. It's warning us that you don't want to connect to IRC chat as root. That's stupid. <laughs> and it actually says, you're stupid. Okay, well, I, I would agree. I'm not actually going to connect to any channels, though. I'm just going to close hex chat, but that's why it's there. Silfeed is the email client. I'm not going to configure an email. Um... Silfeed, I have played around with Silfeed before in the past uh, for a light email client, light minimal email client. I, I got to be honest, I, I still don't like it. Uh, I think there are better alternatives to Silfeed. Uh, it, it's pretty bad in my opinion. They're just my opinion though. But for those that want to check it out, Silfeed, this is Silfeed version 3.7. Let me close that out. Also under internet, we have transmission for a BitTorrent client. We have the ability to turn on and off Tor. So I guess this toggles the Tor network on. So if I toggle it on, it says Tor is now running on port 8123. So that is very cool. Uh, if you wanted, you know, to surf the web with anonymity. So that, that's kind of neat. That is actually a, a really killer feature. Uh, I did not expect 4M to have Tor already on the system ready to go like that. Uh, also under internet, we have GNOME PPP, we have GWGET, and UGET. UGET is a, a download manager. We have a maintenance category with several things here. Uh, of course, it, again, you could use 4M Linux as a system rescue CD or system rescue USB stick. So there's uh, some programs here appropriate for that. Then we have our file managers. We have several file managers. We have PC Man FM, a graphical file manager, uh, one of my favorite graphical file managers. I always use it on my open box installations, and it's appropriate for JWM as well. So PC Man FM is fantastic. There was also a terminal-based file manager in here as well, Midnight Commander. Uh, Midnight Commander is fine, too. Uh, nothing wrong with Midnight Commander. For terminal-based file managers, though, you guys know here lately, my preference is VIFM. Uh, I doubt VIFM is installed here. <laughs> Ngrampa. Ngrampa is going to be our archive manager. This is for zip, targz, unzip, that sort of thing. So Ngrampa 1.20, that's Mate's archive manager. So that's an interesting choice, uh, but I, it's a fine archive manager. We have CD, DVD categories here for burning ISOs, for, you know, making... USB sticks or whatever. We have a, a disk burner and then we have eject here. I'm not sure what eject you have. I guess if this was physical hardware, maybe it would eject a, a disk. Uh, interesting. 
partition managers. We have, of course, GNU parted. Uh, we have F disk and CF disk. I mentioned that earlier. Most distributions are going to have both of those on here. Uh, G disk is also here. CG disk is also here. And I mentioned G parted would probably be here. And it is uh, monitoring utilities. Nmon. Nmon is a really neat little utility for monitoring various things on your system. If you want to monitor CPU, just type C or D for disk. And it'll give you that information or M for memory. Uh, I've actually have Nmon installed on my physical machines uh, really like that for you know monitoring your system also under monitoring htop is here uh, let's check out what kind of system resources 4m Linux is using and there you go I gave this VM two cores of my six core CPU I gave this VM four gigs of RAM we are using 120 megabytes of that four gigs of RAM I gave this machine that is incredible and we have a little bit of stuff going on, right? HTOP is open, of course. Conky is running on the desktop. Uh, we have a panel with a SysTray. There's some stuff going on in the SysTray. 120 megs. That is insane. And that's why a lot of these distros use Joe's Window Manager, JWM. It's because as, f as fast and light as OpenBox and FluxBox are, and you can get them under 200 megs, it's hard to get them down close to 100 megs, and JWM is not that hard to get to that 100 meg level. Uh, I could strip this down and probably get it down to like 80 or 90 megs pretty easily. Joe's Window Manager is about as light and fast as you're going to get. So I'm going to go back to the menu, and the menu categories, by the way, have the four M's. I already uh, opened up the maintenance one and went through most of it, except for this last category, miscellaneous tools. Clam AV is here. That's an antivirus program. It's a terminal-based antivirus program. I actually don't want it to scan the whole system. Can I close that and stop all of this from happening? I am not sure. <laughs> okay. Um, there is a GUI front end to Clam AV. If you don't like doing it at the terminal, you can install a program called Clam TK, which is just a front end to Clam AV. Uh, and miscellaneous tools, we have GNU Grub again and Smart. So that was the maintenance category. So that's all the stuff. You know, if you want to use this as a live USB for system rescue, most of what you need is in this category. Then we have a multimedia category. And it actually has a lot of stuff in the multimedia category. Under a category called Let's Play, we have Also Player, MPV, Timidity, a sample MP3, and a sample MP4 to play, I guess, to make sure the players work. Uh, then we have a Let's Rip category. That's interesting for ripping music. We have a Sunder here. CDAA 2 Wave. I've never used that one. And Make MKV. We have a Mixer category with Also Mixer, Pavu Control, the Pulse Audio Volume Control. So Also Mixer allows you to adjust, you know, the volumes, uh, volume settings for you know, various input and output on your system. Pulse Audio Volume Control was also here. It basically does the same way. It's just in a graphical sort of way rather than in the terminal. Uh, both are, are very fine programs. We have a category under, multi under multimedia called Let's View. So this is our image viewers. So we have GPIC View. We also have a PDF Viewer, QPDF View. So that's a light, minimal PDF Viewer. This is QPDF View 0.4.16. All right, under multimedia, we also have Let's Edit. We have Image Magic, Converse Scene. I'm not exactly sure what that is. A new version of Converse Scene is available. I don't want it. Let's decline that. Let's. I just want to know what this program is. Oh, it's a batch image converter and resizer. So yeah, for editing images, of course. Makes sense since it's under the Edit category. Also under the Edit category, we have MT Paint and Hyper-VC. Then we have mini server and stop all, stop all. I'm not sure what stop all would do. Let's hit it. Start all. All servers have been started. Okay. But I'm not exactly sure what I'm starting and stopping there. Uh, again, I wish the website had documented some of this a little better. The website was really bad. The documentation for 4M Linux, uh, not good at all. Really lacking. Uh, we have a category called settings. Auto start for, I guess, the programs that launch on startup, such as Conky that launched on startup. Uh, we have our firewall. Let's see what firewall program they're using. Actually, this is just the config for the firewall. Uh, of course, the plain text editor is Leafpad. That's nice to know. Uh, let's go back to the menu to mini server. And under tests, 
We have FTP, HTTP, SSH, Tilnet, you know, all your networking stuff. Under miscellaneous tools, we have Lynx. That's going to be the Lynx terminal web browser. That's Lynx with a I, L I N K S. You guys know I prefer L Y N X Lynx for my terminal based web browser, but Lynx, L I N K S, is a fine uh, terminal based web browser as well. Anything else that we need to take a look at? Uh, not really. Uh, that's pretty much all the uh, main programs. No real Office programs. Actually, LibreOffice is here. That Surely that's just the installer. Yeah, it, do you want to download and install LibreOffice? Probably most people wouldn't want the full LibreOffice suite on a distribution like this. A matter of fact, let me go back to that category again. So yeah, that LibreOffice was here under extensions. That means these programs are not actually installed. You can install them, so they are available. So LibreOffice was available, Abbey Word, GIMP, GNU, GNU Merit, Chromium, Opera, Skype, Dropbox, FileZilla, SM2, Audacity, Blender. Uh, well, I can't imagine doing something like Blender on a distro like this, but it, it's there. <laughs> uh, PZip, uh, Unit Bootin, VirtualBox is available, Wine, uh, Java, various Java apps, Java games, uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, so you do have a number of programs not installed by default, but they're a one-click install, right? You click on Chromium, for example, and probably the terminal pops up and you press Y for yes and it begins installing Chromium for you. And that is pretty much everything that is here installed by default, uh, again, without going through and installing any of the, quote, extensions. If we take a look at some of what's running down in the sys tray, you see I've got... Uh, basically a calendar here. What is this? Osmo 0.4.2. So that's kind of neat. We have, our, of course, our network manager. And I do have working internet right now uh, here in the VM. Of course, I, my host machine is a wired connection, so I didn't have to fool with Wi-Fi. We have uh, this paperclip symbol. I'm assuming this is my clipboard. Let me go to help. Let's see. Welcome to XPad. So this particular uh, clipboard is called XPad. We have a volume controller called Mixer, Show Mixer, yeah. And right now the volume's turned all the way down. Let's turn it all the way up. Of course, I've got nothing playing, but... And then we got a battery. Of course, I'm not on a laptop, so the battery is nothing to show. And then what is this graph here? Clicking on it does nothing. Right-click or left-click, so I'm not really sure what that graph is. And then, of course, we have our clock. And before I go, though, you guys know I can't do one of these installation and first looks without checking out the wallpapers. So if I go to settings, go to desktop, and then to wallpapers, let's see. Oh, now this is actually a really neat wallpaper utility. I wonder what this program is. But that is very, very neat. I like that. By the way, that we have a dock at the top. I mentioned that in the live environment. I didn't mention it since we actually did the install. Uh, I'm not sure, if, honestly, if I would use the dock. Uh, not really sure. You know, I'm not sure what dock that is, but that's fine. You know, me, personally, I probably wouldn't even bother using it. What's the purpose of having a dock if I already have a panel to uh, either get rid of the dock or get rid of the panel? I don't need both of them. Uh, that's, again, just me, personally. Let me go back and turn on that wallpaper utility again because I thought that was really neat. By the way, I like that wallpaper for a minimal wallpaper. I like wallpapers where, you know, not much is going on. There really isn't much to choose from here. Uh, yeah, don't have too many options here. Yeah, that's not bad. I think I just like, you know, again, something plain. You guys know I'm a minimal sort of wallpaper kind of guy. So, yeah, we'll just go with that. Yeah, I like that. The one thing I, I want to talk about, though, in closing, and this may kind of be a deal breaker for, for some people. You guys notice I didn't show you how to install any software other than the extensions that they have here, which you just, they're a one click. You click on them, terminal opens up and installs LibreOffice or GIMP or whatever for you. Uh, you can't open up a terminal and use something like apt, you know, sudo apt install or sudo pacman dash s or, you know, uh, zipper or dnf or emerge or any of the other Linux package managers you're familiar with. Um, there is no package manager in 4M Linux. It just doesn't have one. <laughs> yeah, I've went through the menu system. There isn't, you know, any kind of GUI package manager. There's no terminal based package manager. 
Looking at the website, they don't mention a package manager on any page on 4mlinux.com. And finally, I went and found a post over at linuxquestions.org. That particular site is home to the official 4M Linux forums, and I found a, a forum post where somebody asked the question, hey, where's the package manager? And no, we don't have one. So to say that you're going to be limited on, on software is an understatement. Uh, that's also, again, why the, the guy that emailed me that asked me to review this Linux distro, he was asking how to get VirtualBox guest editions installed. Again, you're not going to get them installed because they're probably not going to be in the repos anyway. Well, with 4M Linux, you don't even really have repos or a package manager for the VirtualBox guest editions to be in. So <laughs> uh, that's a no-go. But luckily, just use XR and R and you should be able to get a proper screen resolution if you want to check out 4M in a virtual machine. Now, before I go, I do need to thank a few special people. This show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Leo, Rob, Robert, and Tony. They are the producers of this show. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without those guys, this show wouldn't have been possible. The show was also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen that you see their names on the screen. They help support my work over on Patreon. I want to thank each and every one of them. If you would like to support my work, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.